When we had our reflection last Wednesday on the life of Hannah, the mother of Samuel, an unsung biblical character of her time, we have learned that no matter how difficult situations in our lives would be, and especially if we're confronted with so much pressure and criticisms, we can still find peace in our lives if we would learn to forgive ourselves by loving our imperfect self even more. And if we would learn how to forgive others of their prejudices and criticisms, because like us, they are imperfect and they commit mistakes as well. We are also reminded last Wednesday that being at peace with oneself helps us to appreciate the presence of others who are always there for us. This leads us to our reflection on how we should be how we should also be there for the people who loves us and who we love. If we ask ourselves tonight, when we are there for our friends, family, loved ones, what do we usually feel? Isn't it profound happiness? An inner joy that is uplifting and fulfilling at the same time. This is the feeling of another unsung biblical character that we will be reflecting on tonight. And her name is Elizabeth, who found joy in being there for others. Elizabeth is one of the biblical characters that we might have read in the Bible, but we do not give so much attention to. She may be mentioned on scripture readings on Sundays of Advent season, especially that we have recently celebrated 100 second years as a church last Sunday, so might perhaps Elizabeth is really not a strange name to us. Yet we seldom or perhaps we have not listened to sermons where she is being discussed or being reflected on. Reading Luke chapter 1, verses 39 to 45, we usually draw at our attention to Mary, the mother of Jesus. But most of the time, we neglect to reflect on Mary's joyful friend and cousin, Elizabeth. She becomes an unsung biblical character for us because her contributions in the life of Mary was not written in the Bible in full detail, and even in her contributions to the life of Zechariah, her husband. And so let us try to learn more about Elizabeth tonight with two points. One is that our presence brings joy for others. Although we emphasize on this point tonight, it was not actually the case for Elizabeth and Je Je Zechariah at first. Let us backtrack on our scripture text a bit and try to reflect on Luke chapter 1 verses 5 to 25. As was a barren woman, Elizabeth also lived a life of humiliation like Hannah because the Jewish society in her time condemned barren women. In Luke chapter 5, verse 20, verses 5 to 25, Luke chapter 1, verses 5 to 25, we can read how Elizabeth suffered from the con condemnation of her society, considering that her husband, Zechariah, was serving as priest before the Lord. And they were living blamelessly according to the commandments and regulations of the Lord. Yet, their years are passing by so fast in this world, 
and still they did not have children. Elizabeth's barrenness made the couple sorrowful. And it was so that an angel of the Lord, Gabriel, came to announce to Zechariah that they will have a child even in their old age. But out of frustration and desperation, even Zechariah did not come to believe the message of the messenger. And because of this, Gabriel forbade Zechariah to speak until the day will come that Elizabeth will be pregnant because he did not believe the angel's words which will come true at their appointed time. Indeed, in, in God's own time, even when Elizabeth was very old to conceive a child, God blessed them with one, whom we now know as John the Baptizer. God said to Zechariah in chapter 1, verses 14 to 15, You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. Since we already know how John the baptizer prepared the way for Jesus, we can affirm that this is indeed true. Now when God granted Elizabeth a child, her thankful heart made her to say to the Lord in verse 25, The Lord has done this for me. And these days, he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. This is how God transforms people to become God's instruments in this world. Elizabeth, who was believed to be a disgrace in the eyes of the people and who was a burden in the life of Zechariah, was transformed by God to become God's instrument of joy as she bore John the baptizer into this world. If indeed we want God to use our lives to be God's instruments, our presence alone can turn sorrows into joy. Our second point is that being transformed by God we find joy in being there for others. As in the case of Mary and Elizabeth, we can read that because it was Elizabeth's joy to have Mary in their house, we can say that we bring joy to others even more if we commit ourselves to journey with them. When Mary was just arriving at Elizabeth's house, Elizabeth's reaction of joy was so great and contagious that Mary was able to say her Magnificat or prayer. God's blessings made Elizabeth a joyful woman and a joyful friend and relative to Mary. This is why as soon as Mary went to her to announce Jesus coming in her womb, Elizabeth was so happy for Mary that even the child in her womb leaped because she was filled with joy. In her jubilation, she explain, exclaimed to Mary, Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. Moving forward to the succeeding verses in our scripture reading, we can read that Mary remained in Elizabeth's home for three months before she went back to her home. 
The struggles that Elizabeth faced did not hinder her to become an inspiration, a source of joy for others. Instead, all the more she became grateful and joyful, knowing that God has the right time for everything, and that all the years of sorrow that, come, that came to her life would just be a chapter of her life. For us today, being happy or being filled with joy by the Holy Spirit, like what happened to Elizabeth, becomes merely a personal choice. And at times, we just love to have vengeance more than simply be happy in the presence of others. But if we indeed choose to give joy and comfort to others, we would realize that it does not necessarily need talent, psychological studies prerequisites, or even money or wealth. We just need to be there for others, like what Elizabeth did to Zechariah and Mary. As we end our reflection tonight, let us try to ask ourselves, this 2018, have we ever said good and inspiring things to others to make them happy? Have we been there for our family and friends who were in pain and suffering? Have we tried to let God use our lives to become His instruments in spreading happiness and joy to this world? Or were we just dwelling so much in fear of getting hurt again and just merely accepting that life is difficult and part of that difficulty is feeling sadness? In this season of anticipation, this is the perfect time that we bring God's joy to others by becoming Christ-like examples in this world. Where there is joy in being there for others, comes love for others, a kind of love that is unforgettable, just like the love that Eunice gave to her son, Timothy, as she will be the unsung biblical character that we will be reflecting on in the last Wednesday of this month. And so, dear friends, may our presence give joy to others. And may we find joy in being there for others. Amen.